Welcome to the first full official example problem from chapter 3. This problem is focused on the early part of chapter 3 when we are thinking about vectors in two dimensions. We actually do have a full vector addition example that is on the light board at GRCC, but we don't really label that as a um, example problem, but it, it is functionally an example of vector addition. But this is the first one that in our slides is labeled with an example um, number and letter. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. The key thing for this example is it is a little more difficult and tricky than the one that we solved in the lecture video. There's a couple of sticking points that we're going to discuss and make sure we understand so that we recognize how this is slightly different than the one that gave us the distances um, of the trip that had two different directions. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we have a person who runs to the east at a speed of five meters per second, but with the idea of a direction of east that is their velocity, and they are running at that velocity for 80 seconds. Then they turn and run seven meters per second north. So seven meters per second is their speed and they run at that speed for 60 seconds. Now, the reason why this problem is a little trickier than the one that we solved in the lecture video is that we can't use the five and seven meters per second to get average speed or average velocity because we spent more time going slow than we did going fast. The average is not going to be halfway in between those two. So we'll talk about how we solve for distance, speed, displacement, and average velocity. The first thing we need to do is recognize that that 5 meters per second, because it's a constant 5 meters per second, we can also call it the average. And in this one single dimension, we can use our understanding of the average velocity. So we were running at 5 meters per second. We want to find out what our displacement was for that amount of time, and the time itself was 80 seconds total. If we multiply both sides by 80, we get that 5 meters per second times 80 seconds is equal to our displacement. Now, really important, as always, we learned this in Chapter 1, and we're going to continue to pay attention to it, we want to check our units. Seconds on the bottom can cancel seconds on the top. But if we see a very similar problem in the homework, and we're told that this person is running for two minutes, those units of seconds and minutes wouldn't be compatible, and we would have to make sure that they we convert them so that they match and can actually be canceled out. So we have 400 meters of motion east, and then same thing up here, the same equation. We'll still use x for displacement just for now because we're thinking about one dimension. So we have 7 meters per second is equal to the amount of displacement north, divided by 60 seconds is the total time elapsed. If we multiply both sides by 60, we have 7 meters per second times 60 seconds is equal to delta x. And again, I'll show that those units cancel the bottom of the um, meters per second and the top for just seconds by itself. And we get that this was 420 meters. Okay. So now we get to the real goals of the problem. In order for us to think about distance, distance just cares about how far in total we went, no matter what direction we were running. And so the distance in this case is 400 meters plus 420 meters and so it's 800 
and 20 meters total. That's our answer for distance. No direction needed. The average speed is also straightforward because it isn't using the idea of vectors. It's just going to be the distance traveled over the elapsed time. The elapsed time is the total amount of time that we were running. So we have 820 meters on top. We just solved for that. And on the bottom, we were running for 80 seconds and then also 60 seconds. Those times would add together. We didn't suddenly go backwards in time. We have to add those two times together. And then we can get our average speed. We expect it to be somewhere between our slow speed and our fast speed because speed doesn't care that we um, were changing direction. We know that we spend a little more time going slowly, so we actually expect it to be probably a little bit less than 6 meters per second. When we do that calculation, we get 5.86 meters per second. That is a perfectly reasonable answer. In lecture, we can just default to three significant figures, but it is also excellent to round that to 5.9 meters per second. But note that in both cases, that is a number that is less than 6, and it is specifically different than 6 meters per second. Now we switch to the um, ideas that require us to think a little bit more about vectors. So we were here at the start of the run, and we've made it all the way here to the end. The displacement is the hypotenuse of the triangle that I've just drawn, that points from the very start to the very end. There are two things that we need to know to be able to answer that displacement question. We need to know the size, the length of that arrow, and we need to know the angle. All right, so the size of our displacement comes from the idea of Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. In this case, we have 400 squared plus 420 squared equals the size that we're looking for, squared. We can take the square root of both sides, and we get, for the size that we're trying to solve for, when we plug all this into our calculator, we get 580 meters. Now, that's the amount of displacement. We also need this angle. The tangent of the angle, by definition, when we look back at our slides for the introductory trigonometry, tangent is defined as the opposite side. So based on where I drew this, the opposite side is the 420. Over the adjacent side, next to, which is 400. To get the angle by itself, we have to use the arc tangent or inverse tangent button on our calculator. It looks like tangent to the negative first. And then we can plug all of that into our calculator. And we get 46.4 degrees or 46 degrees. Both are good. So for the displacement then, the full answer is going to be 580 meters at an angle of 46.4 degrees. And if we look at this, having the picture is perfectly fine, but if we want to state in words what direction this points, we were facing east and we swung north, that angle would be north of east. And that would be our answer for the displacement. Notice that it does take more effort than distance or speed. And then for average velocity, the average velocity is going to use that idea, the 580 meters, and it's going to divide by the same total elapsed time, the same 140 seconds. We have no time travel. We should definitely, definitely not 
be taking 80 minus 60. The person just continued to run. And we get an answer of 4.14 meters per second, again at that 46.4 degree angle. So that's our average velocity. Sorry, it's a little bit squished on the page. So the hardest part was the displacement because that was when we had to actually do the triangle ideas and the trigonometry ideas that we're introducing and using in this semester. We will be using that quite often when we are dealing with vector addition and thinking about vectors in two dimensions. And so we want to make sure we understand how that works. This is the only example problem that shows up before the projectile motion examples. And so we're going to see that this problem isn't going through the full problem solving process because we're just trying to do kind of smaller calculations to get to the goals here. We will see a very robust and complete problem solving process when we are going through the projectile motion problems because they are a specific problem type and we want to make sure we know how to use our understanding and abilities from chapter two in a very similar problem type that shows up later in chapter three. So we will see you in the next videos.